Well, to make the parachute for a rocket, you're going to need some kind of material that's thin but as durable as you can get. I found these little bath liners, bath shower liners, at the dollar store seem to work really well. Um, and anyway, what you'll want to do is get a piece and fold on one of the natural lines that are already there and pick a, um, a diameter of your hexagon shape that you're here for your parachute. I picked about 15 inches. So I marked that out. I marked 15 inches across. And then what I did is I measured half of that distance out this direction. Um, so I did, you know, seven and a half inches. And um, I kind of tried, I, I did a little mark and tried to make an angle, a uh, slight angle to that mark. There, there are more scientific ways you could do this, but this is a lot quicker. And then I made a little, a little mark where that, where that ended up. And then I measured that same distance. Uh, I, I figured out how long this was actually. It turned out that this is about nine inches because the seven and a half out, when you bend over here, it's about nine inches. Uh, so I made this little end nine inches as well and marked that. And then went over here and connected the lines. Then kind of looked at it from a little ways back to make sure it seemed pretty nice and even. And then all we're going to do is cut this on out. And uh, folding it in half like this, it makes it nice and easy to make a symmetrical or at least really close to symmetrical design um, and even if there's a slight problem or imperfection it's not really going to affect how the, the parachute performs so don't worry too much if you're slightly off or I wouldn't fuss about it for a long time um, and there you go you've got your nice little parachute took me a minute or two and as you can see, this one's a little bit longer than it is wide. That's not a big deal. It's not going to affect anything. If it really bugs you, you could fold it back in half and trim the ends. Okay, what you're going to want to do next is uh, take some packaging tape or any type of tape really would work. Get a small section and you'll tape over the corner on the back and then fold it over. And you'll end up with these little corners that you got to cut off. But it'll reinforce that edge. And then you'll take a hole punch. I had a three hole punch, but it works and punch through each corner. Um, you'll get some thread. Um, they have extra heavy duty thread um, at any, any of the sewing stores and whatnot that works well. And you want to get it about double the length of the parachute. So go a little past the parachute and then double that. Uh, cut three that length. And then what you're going to do is tie one end. You're going to do a, a square knot. So you're going to get a little loop going. Um, do the over and under and then do it one more time to cinch it tight in that one spot and then you'll take the other end of that and put it into the next hole. Um, you'll end up with three sort of loops and they pull together to hold the, hold the parachute in. And I'll show you how to tie that into the nose cone and everything a little later. Alright, so while I was making the, uh, or letting the motor mount dry, I spray painted this uh, tube, a burgundy red color here. Uh, and while I was all drying, I went ahead and made the parachute like you saw, so this is ready to go now. only took about 20 minutes or a half hour to dry. Um, I took some steel wool and buffed the whole thing, and that kind of evens out the sheen. Um, normally you'd want to do that and then do another spray and go and do many multiple coats to get a better finish, but for the sake of shortening the video, I went ahead and did this. Uh, we're going to attach the fins and to kind of locate them where you want them. It's not a bad idea to take one of these uh, tape measures, the Bendy tape measure deals. You wrap it around, figure out how wide this thing is. Mine happened to fall right at six and a half. So if you divide that by three, it's two and three sixteenths. And you just make little hash marks um, every two and three sixteenths inch. You're going to want to check it by eyeball anyway, because sometimes that's a little off. Uh, but you, you want to get some of this hobby cement glue I talked about earlier. It's only a dollar at 99 cent stores or Dollar Tree. And it, it really does a good job of holding these things on there when there's no slot. So you'll basically just take a nice generous bead along the uh, back side of the fin. And a lot of that will fall into the corrugation, but that's okay. I'll show you how we're going to reinforce it later. Line it up with one side of the hash mark. And before you set the other end down, try to eyeball it and get it as close to straight as you, you can by eyeball. And then you're going to kind of sight down from the front of it and kind of make sure that it's going straight. And then hold it there for about a minute. 
and that should get it started to stick. Uh, what we're going to do a little later on, I'll go ahead and do this now, um, there's not a whole lot of squeeze out which you actually want some so you'll take the, the bead of glue and kind of just drop it down in that corner and run a bead of glue all the way down and this stuff stays puffed up like this which is kind of nice so um, after you do that you'll let this side dry for a while usually takes a half an hour and then you'll um, you'll do that to the other side as well and you'll end up with glue holding it directly down and then glue on both sides creating little fillets that kind of hold it in and that does a really good job um, you can see in there now the motor mount's been glued in I put a lot of glue around the outside and uh, this stuff is just works wonders for holding I've I've had fins hit concrete pretty hard and they did break off of this stuff so I highly recommend it um, and I'll go ahead and move on to the next portion. We've got to next. mention a couple things. After you hold it there, that's not a bad idea to take some um, tape, push down on it um, in the center, and then pull the tabs over to uh, get a stiff bond while you're letting it sit. And then that way you can kind of sight down the end and make sure it's going straight and not curving this way. And uh, if you turn it on its side, it's not going to kind of fall or collapse that way while the glue dries. That way you can set it aside while this one dries. When you get ready to do the next one, after this has dried pretty good, um, you'll take that off um, and you'll end up needing to have like a box or something to set it on and while you, you know, so the fin doesn't hit the table while you do the next one. And you'll, it's kind of a painstaking slow process, so what I usually do is I'll do one fin, let it dry, um, and while I'm doing the fin I'll work on other parts of the rocket, um, like the parachute or getting the cone ready and all the other stuff that we'll go into. And then, you know, do another fin, do another part of the rocket. After you get all fins on and they're dried, you'll want to do the fillets on either side, one side at a time. You can usually do two fins on one face, turn it, do the two faces, let it sit for an hour, and do the same thing. Again, a little slow, but it'll you'll be thankful in the long run. It'll make a lot stronger rocket. Okay, another thing I like to do while the fins are drying, or drying is create an ejection shroud for your parachute. Um, particularly with these larger diameter rockets, the recovery wadding doesn't do the greatest job of protecting your chute from the ejection charge, so you'll melt through your chutes pretty quick if you don't do this. Uh, so what I do is I take a toilet paper roll, and then I cut out two circles in cardboard, uh, same diameter as the tube, and I sandwich in between those little circles some kind of uh, rubber band, or in this case I just use the, um, one of the little uh, tether things on these little masks I got at the dollar store, ten of them for a buck. So, uh, so just anything that's stretchy, kind of rubber bandish. And then uh, I stapled it in there and glued it all between the sandwiched circles. And then I glued the circles with just super glue around the edge to um, do the little toilet paper roll. And then what we'll do is take foil. I just folded foil over four times uh, with this deal. And we'll fold it over the outside of this little ejection shroud deal. Um, want to be careful, maybe cut a little part where the string wants to come out. You kind of want the string to be able to go downward. So, let me hold that up while you cinch this around. We'll take some tape and uh, wrap that around the outside to hold that on. Kind of pull it down tight so it just cinches the stuff down. You don't want it to bulk up too much, otherwise it won't fit in your tube. Um, speaking of, if this toilet paper roll is too uh, big to fit in the tube, you can cut it down the center and cinch it down like we did for the rocket motor mount. And then we'll take uh, this doodad, and don't worry if it's a little long, it's actually good. And um, take a little piece of tape to hold it down while you twist it around. And we'll just twist this around the outside. And um, taper down. Kind of tape one side, pull it tight, and again, just trying to get it reasonably tight there. Then you can fold, actually, probably I'll trim a little bit of this off. You want about, I don't know, three quarters of an inch or so, fold on the inside. And we'll just fold that down in there and later on I'll take some tape to 
tape that up against the edges so it doesn't snag your chute and hold it in there. Um, but that's a good general idea, and there you go, you got a little ejection um, shroud. Um, and I'll explain how that works a little bit later.